So we have a scenario where uh, we've got uh, a switch and we've got a light bulb and another switch. So you walk into a room, let's say a bedroom, and you flick the switch, light goes on, you jump into bed, and then you realize you have to get up to turn this switch off again. But what we really want is for these switches to be able to change the state of the light. So if this switch changes, then the state of the light changes. If it's off, it's on, and if it's on, it's off, etc. So there's lots of different ways of doing this, but I thought we might use uh, an XOR gate. So an XOR gate looks something like this. And we've got an A and a B, and then we've got an A, X, or B. And what that looks like is whatever state the output is in, when you change the input, the output changes. So if you've got, let's say, a zero, zero and a zero output, and we change this to one, then the output changes. If we then change that one, this one to a one, okay, so then that also changes. And then if we change, let's say, this one to a zero, then it also changes again. So that's perfect. You come in, you switch the light, it doesn't matter which position it's in, and uh, if the light was off, it's on. Perfect. You go over to the bed, jump into bed, you figure, okay, it's time to turn the light off, and no matter what position this switch is in, you switch it, and the light goes off. So that's what we want. Now, to do that, um, we could use a CD4070 quad XOR gate. So we've got 14 pins and a pretty standard configuration. We've got VCC, and this is pin number one here, and we've got ground. And then we've got, let me see if I can find my colors. Uh, then we've got two inputs here and here with an output on this pin. Let's go to green. So we've got two inputs coming in here with an output here. Let's go to black. We've got two inputs here and here with an output here. And let's go to blue. And we've got two inputs here and here with an output to here. So theoretically, uh, we could tie one switch to one of these inputs and the other switch to the other input, and then we can flick the light on and off as we see fit. Let's breadboard it up and, uh, and we can see what it looks like. All right, so what's gonna happen? So let's do the scenario where it's a room that you walk into and the light is off, so you flick the switch that is closest to you and the light goes on. Then you walk out of the room and turn that switch off and so the light goes off again, that's pretty standard. Let's say that you go into the room and you turn the switch on, and then you go to the other side of the room, let's say it's a bedroom and there's a light switch by the bed, and then when you've had enough of the light, you can flick that off at that switch. And then perhaps in the morning, uh, maybe you get out of bed, you go to the light near the door and open that up, and then the light goes back on again and then you can turn the light off at the bedroom, uh, at the bed, sorry. So any one of those switches, whenever you change the state, will change the state of the uh, light, which is pretty useful. Here's our CD4070, and uh, what we've got is just a button here with uh, six volts coming in, and then a 1K resistor going to pin number seven, and reverse on this side to pin number six. And I've just got a couple of pull down resistors here from that as well to get uh, to make sure that we've got a good um, signal so that this is always going to be uh, down to ground unless these buttons are pushed. And then coming out of pin number five is our LED. So all I'm gonna do is walk into the bedroom, let's say on this side and light goes on. That's fantastic. I walk out the, of the bedroom and light goes off. As expected, that's nice. But then if I go to the other side of the room where the other switch is and flick the switch, then the light goes off 
and from this side it goes on. In other words, whatever switch that we use, it doesn't matter, but the state of the light changes, which is great. Probably only uh, one other thing to do is to um, maybe get some more voltage going in this thing here because a CD4070 can certainly handle some more and uh, let's arc up a bigger LED to represent a room light. So same setup as before except now instead of a direct output via a, um, like a, a low output LED I've actually got this now going through a 1K resistor to the base of an SS8050, uh, which is supposedly, I think, rated to 1.5 amps. And then uh, we've got, uh, we're gonna have 12 volts coming in through this LED through a 10 um, ohm resistor to the collector and then out through the emitter. So uh, let's arc it up. So there's our 12 volts, so we walk into the room Oh yeah, that's a room light. Uh, that's around 0.6 amps flowing through that system now, so that's terrific. And then we walk over to the other side of the room and we can turn it off and then back on and so forth from any of those switches, which is what we wanted. So that's the circuit working for this week. See you next time.